Welcome compadres. Today I'm going to introduce you to fastener joint design. So as a structural analyst there's really three failure modes we consider when we look at fastener joint design. It's going to include bolt bearing and shear tear out and also fastener failure. So bolt bearing and shear tear out is going to be a failure mode for the material that is holding this fastener in place. So in bolt bearing, essentially your fastener is putting pressure on the inside edge, some putting a shear on the inside edge of this clearance hole, and it causes your material to yield. In shear tear out, it's the exact same thing, except your bolt rips out and takes the material with it, and also fastener failure, your fastener fails. One thing to consider when you do fastener failure is we often consider just combined tension and shear acting on the fastener. And the reason we do this is because in joint design, usually the torques and moments that act on your joint can be easily converted to shear and tension components. That's why we do it. It's easy to do by hand, and you can actually um, go through and do the hand calculation and get a reliable result. But also, uh, your FEA program, what it does is it will spit out your axial loads on your fastener and your shear components in the X and Y directions. And you can easily pull those out, put it in a spreadsheet program or another program, and do your analysis there. So we're going to take these three failure modes, look at them, uh, go into a little bit of detail on the equations and assumption used. That's that way you know when we go to program it in the next video in Python using an object-oriented approach you understand what's going on and you can refer back to this if you get confused there but now I'm just going to introduce you to the equations and assumptions used in the bolt bearing calculation so bolt bearing just to reiterate you have shear components that act on your fastener are actually going to be acting on your material as well. Your V1 and V2 components in the X and Y direction, which you pull from your FEA program, you use those in this calculation. So the first step is to calculate your resultant shear. It's uh, simply going to just be the vector sum of those two, and then you take the magnitude. So you can see here, here in this equation, this is just simple. Pythagorean theorem, not very difficult. So in bearing failure, you have a bearing strength property, and that's usually derived experimentally, and you'll have to go look these up in tables for certain materials. But your bearing strength is going to be a function of your edge distance, E right here, which is going to be from the center of your clearance hole to the edge of the material, divided by the diameter of your clearance hole. And we use the diameter of the clearance hole because it's more conservative. Um, and in practice, what you try to do is you try to um, design in a way that your, your E over D is greater than 1.5. Um, anything less than that is kind of risky when you're dealing with dynamic loads. Uh, e over D um, greater than 1.5 is uh, recommended and they have values for that in uh, certain handbooks as shown here. So you can get your bearing strength as a function of your E over D ratio and they actually give two values in handbooks. You're going to get an ultimate and you're going to get a bearing ultimate and a bearing yield. I like to use the bearing yield because it's more conservative and then once you get those values you're going to need to know your bearing area. Your bearing area is essentially going to be the area uh, which your bolt presses into on this uh, holding material. So it's going to be your uh, diameter of your fastener times the thickness. So you can see this cross section right here. This is a side view. You can see if uh, your thickness times the diameter of your bolt is going to give you your bearing area. And then lastly, once you have those values, your, your total shear, your bearing strength, your bearing area, you can calculate your margin of safety, which is simply going to be your allowable over a safety factor times uh, your, your load minus one. As long as that's greater than zero, 
your design is safe and you will be confident that your system will not fail uh, due to bolt bearing. So some key points that we went through here is that you want to design your holes so that your E over D is greater than 1.5. That's recommended from a design point of view. And you want to use D as your clearance hole diameter when you're calculating E over D. And also you want to use your minimum edge distance because it's more conservative. In this case, um, our minimum edge distance is just going to be from here to the edge. If you try to align it with your your uh, sh your resultant shear vector, you're actually going to get a longer distance, and so that's going to be less conservative, and that's harder to calculate, right? If I go from here to to the point at which my shear load acts parallel to it. That's, that's really hard to do, so we like to use the minimum edge distance, so from the center to the edge, directly to the edge. Uh, that's the easiest way to do it, uh, and, and your design will be safe um, if your margins are, are positive. And in this case, uh, when you calculate your bearing area, you want to use your nominal fastener diameter. And I like to use a safety factor of 1.15 in our margin of safety calculation. Um, that's what I use. Uh, you can use whatever company standard uh, you have. That's what I use. The next failure mode is, we're going to talk about is shear tear out. The equation and assumptions that go into this. So the model we use is shown up above. Essentially you have your shear acting on uh, against this surface and we assume that it's going to fail along two surfaces. So these are your failure surfaces and they're going to be equal to uh, the bolt force, whatever's acting on it, divided by two on each plane. And so the shear force acting over this area is what we're considering, these two areas. So your area right here of your surface, your shear area, is actually going to be from here to here this distance times two because you have two surfaces over which it's failing so if we look at our model here it's simply going to be two times the thickness times this distance right here which is going to be E minus the diameter of your clearance hole divided by two uh, so uh, that's that's how this this that's how we do our calculations is assuming this model. So once again we only consider shear components uh, when we look at shear tear out and you want to calculate the resultant like we did in bolt bearing. And then uh, you want to find your shear strength properties of this material. And you can find this in a handbook. If you don't know it, um, this is a good approximation of uh, equation you can use. Your ultimate shear stress is equal to 0.6 times your ultimate tensile stress. You can find that in, our, in uh, several references. That's what I like to use if I don't know this value for my material. And then of course you calculate your shear area and then uh, you can determine your margin of safety which is your allowable over your factor of safety times your load minus one. Make sure that's greater than one and so that's that's kind of it. That's how you would proceed with a calculation. And the key points is assume this shear tear out model where we fell along these surfaces that are going to be perpendicular to the edge that go to the edge of the clearance hole. And then use D as the clearance hole diameter uh, when you're doing shear area calculations. Not the nominal uh, fastener diameter. And the last failure mode we're going to look at in fastener joint design is the fastener combined tension and shear model. And again, just to reiterate, um, we're just assuming that shear and tensile components are acting on your fastener. And what you want to do is you want to first calculate uh, your resultant shear and tension. So your tension component right here is you're going to actually have to include your preload on here. So you're going to pull this the actual load out of your FEA program and you're going to have to add preload to it. 
your preload is simply equal to your applied torque over a torque coefficient times the bolt shank diameter. So this coefficient right here is a function of the friction and bolt stiffness and it can be a little bit hard to calculate sometimes um, but you'll have to go and look at that up in tables for your application and uh, if you don't know the applied torque or your act to design it uh, a lot of times you can assume the worst case preload and when you look at these uh, handbooks and stuff your worst case preload is going to be 0.65 times the yield stress of your bolt times the area shank area of your bolt and then uh, the next thing is to calculate your shear and tension components um, much like we did in shear tear out and bolt bearing if your magnitude of your resultant is going to be this right here for your shear and then your tensile component is going to be your preload plus a safety factor times the tension load you pull out of your FEA program and I want to just emphasize that you don't want to apply your safety factor to your preload there's no need to do that but you need to do it to uh, the load you pull out of your FEA program and then you want to use a failure model. In this case, I'm assuming this failure model right here because I can derive a margin of safety from it that's easy to calculate as shown down here. And it's simply going to be um, a function of shear load ratio and tension load ratio. Your shear load ratio is going to be your safety factor times your total shear divided by your uh, bolt area. In this case, uh, you're also going to divide it by the yield stress of your bolt. If you don't know your yield stress, assume this right here. We've seen this before. It's our von Mises criteria right here. And then your area is simply going to be pi over 4 times the minimum diameter of your bolt squared. So that's how you get that. And then your tension load ratio um, is going to be your... your uh, axial load, total axial load divided by your area, divided by your yield stress and then you can once you have those you can put it in this margin of safety and calculate it by hand. And so the key points in this model are that most joint designs can be reduced to shear and tension loads that's why we use combined tension and shear and then um, You'll have to assume a bolt failure model. In this case, I assume this one, and uh, but there's many more out there. I chose this one because it's easy. And then you want to use the minimum bolt diameter in your area calculation and your safety factor. I like to use 1.15 again. So guys, that's kind of the workflow you need to go through to do this stuff by hand. So we're going to actually combine it into an object-oriented program. Here's our UML diagram, um, and I'm going to show this in the next video once we step into Python. But this is essentially how it's laid out. And we're going to consider combined tension and shear for the fastener, bolt bearing, shear tear out. But essentially, we have our parameters in this box, and then we have our constructors, and then we have our methods that we're going to use. And uh, I just want to emphasize that this introduction was designed to be as simple as possible uh, using conservative assumptions that you can apply in practice. And uh, a lot of times you can make it uh, difficult to do these calculations as difficult you, as you want and as exact as you want. But, uh, you know, it's better to be conservative uh, when you're a designer. Most, so I, I hope uh, you got something out of this, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Adios.